it is another opportune moment to bring to your to your attention some of the key patent issues that are happening in our country. Yes, a lot is taking us by storm. 2021 is just new, but if you're to ask me, it feels like we've been here forever because of the multitude of the things that we have on our plate. But we chew off just a little bit, just as much as we can. And Smart Info TV is here to indulge you in the business talk away from politics and everything that is happening. There are other patent issues, there are other important issues that we need to keep an eye on. And today, particularly, we're going to be discussing the public debt and everything to do with it. How are we performing? How are we managing? Are we hitting red or we are not? And the other recommendations around that particular topic, that is what we're going to be discussing in the next few minutes. So I hope that you can journey with us because there is a lot to pick out from today. And here with me is the ED herself of Seattle. That is none other than Madam Jen Nalonga. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, my dear. And thank you for having me on this talk show. Right, I suppose you're doing well. We've been voting. How did yeah, that go yeah. for you? Yeah, we have been voting. Uh, it's, it has been a bit excessive. Mm -hmm. And maybe we also discuss that when we are discussing this issue mm -hmm. of the debt issue. Mm -hmm. Every day, another voting, another voting. And I say, wow, how are we going to manage? You know, they are, we have voted them into office. We have to pay them. <laughs> said wow absolutely but this is a talk for now yes and let's dive into what we have prepared for today or oh, before we even do that let's first of all unpack the big term public, public debt um uh, public debt is about it's it's a public debt government debt how much government has acquired how much government has borrowed uh, from outside so and government borrows from external sources, but also from domestic sources. But all that, all that portfolio is public debt. Right. So with everything that is happening, we're voting for local government leaders. Uh, COVID-19 is still here. Numbers are still soaring through the roof. Mm. What necessitates the talk of public debt now? OK. Um, maybe before we go into I, I'm analyzing why we need to, and we have to talk about public debt. We need also to talk to first understand why debt? Why do governments acquire debt? Um, because you see government's role, we put governments in power. You and me, Absolutely. we have been, been voting to put governments in power. We put government in power to provide us with services, social services, hospitals, uh, schools, infrastructure like roads, dams and all that. So government has to get resources somewhere to be able to provide those things. And mainly government gets money through three ways. One, taxation. It taxes you and me, we are taxpayers. Taxation, then grants or aid, you know. We get a lot of aid. You have heard of development partners giving us aid, for example, in the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of, you know, governments and foundations helped us. Then another way is through borrowing. Governments borrow uh, to, get, uh, to, to, to get resources. So what has been happening, and taxation, by the way, is the most sustainable way of funding you know, a country mm. for government to be able to get resources. So, but the challenge has been that government hasn't been getting enough taxes because of the contracting economy, but also because of the way we are using the money. Because when it comes to usage of resources, there is the income, there is also the expenditure we come to that. So government hasn't been getting a lot of taxes because of so many reasons, which we might go into the or not. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So because of that, there has been a, a shortfall in government's um, resource envelope. You know, government, for example, has been uh, projecting that we'll get so many trillions, but they get less than that. Mm. So that shortfall, they just have to, to borrow. But when it came to COVID, to the COVID pandemic, it became worse. Because with the COVID pandemic, the economy almost collapsed. 
not just Uganda's economy, but even all the others, because it was a global, COVID was a global crisis, you see. So, but weak economies faced um, bigger problems. Mm -hmm. So our, our economy also faced so many big challenges. Our exports, we couldn't export anywhere. Mm -hmm. Our remittances, we are not getting remittances. Mm -hmm. Tourism collapsed down. down, exactly. And then all this lockdown, the businesses, you know, the resta restaurants closed, schools closed, you know, people became, yeah, people became jobless. Mm -hmm. So, so it has been a mess. So what has government done? Government has gone into borrowing, you know, to address the health crisis, but also to address the economy. They borrowed, got a uh, stimulus package, you know, so government has been borrowing and borrowing very, very heavily because we, before even COVID, we were already indebted, you know, because b before COVID, I think almost 38% were coming to 40 of our GDP was, you know, borrowed, you know, we are borrowing at that rate. And also when you look at our budget, hmm, that almost the second highest item on our budget mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is debt resurfacing. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so you can see even before COVID, the situation was was not the very good. Really. It was so high. Now we go into COVID, it becomes it be becomes worse. Government has borrowed very heavily. In fact, the projection is that during this financial year, twenty. 2020, 2021, our, our percentage, our debt to GDP can go up to 49.9%, four, almost coming to 50. You no, know? it's, it's almost like saying half of your income goes to, uh, to debt, you know, and that isn't really sustainable. So those are the signals that, you, that do tell us yes. uh, that necessitate for the borrowing. And after understanding through th which channels uh, government takes mm -hmm. and what necessitates government to continue borrowing because they need to finance this country, mm -hmm. a lot of projects. Uh, wh why is it important for us to bring it to discussion? Have we found any alarms that have been stricken by the debt burden that we are having right now or is it just a talk that we need to bring to attention? Uh, I, I, I think it's, uh, they are alarm bells when it comes to, uh, to, to the debt question, to the debt issue. There are alarm bells, and for me, I think they should sound even more, more louder. Uh, because if for every shilling, if every five shillings you pay one to debt, you know, then it's alarming. If your budget, you know, you are spending much more, you know, on debt repayment, that already shows the red, exactly. uh, the red mark. We've already More had. than you pay for your health, for your education, for your agriculture. Meaning it is turning out to be the priority. Exactly, it becomes the priority. And we have even gone to the extent, they call it the Ponzi, eh? a Ponzi game, where you, you borrow to pay, you <laughs> borrow to pay. So we are digging one hole hmm, to feed another. You dig here, you feel that one. You know, so so if we are not very, uh, very careful, we are going to a spiral. You know, a, a, um, a cycle of borrowing and borrowing and paying and borrowing, which isn't which isn't sustainable. Because also debt repayment, it means you are not investing. You can't invest in. Pub, you know, you are taking away that money from public investments, you know, mm -hmm. where you can be able to generate resources. But then also when we are, government is borrowing, mm -hmm. government is also, by the way, borrowing heavily on the domestic market, mm -hmm. huh? in banks, internally. internally here. And what does that mean? It means that they are taking away resources from, from the private sector. So our private sector can't access, you know, those loans mm -hmm. and because also government is borrowing at a higher rate you know and when for example you and me also because we also lend to government yeah. when you buy all these bonds i know <laughs> <laughs> you might be having some money and oh, you are putting it yes, in all these absolutely. bonds mm -hmm. you know so so 
people prefer, even banks, mm -hmm. prefer lending to government than lending to individual businesses. As you know, there's a lot of risk, you know. So you find that all the money is going to borrow to lending government instead of, you know, lending to, uh, to, to the businesses. So all this has, has a, 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 um, an impact on our economy. Mm -hmm. And you know, when somebody holds you at ransom, you, are, you have borrowed, you know, you even lose your sovereignty, isn't it? Sometimes even the conditionalities on these loans we, we even don't know them, by the way. We don't know. We don't know what we have given there as security, whether it's our oil. You never know whether all those resources are still ours or not, you know. So, so all those issues, you know, we need the bell should be ringing more that, by the way, there is a problem. There is a problem which we need to, which we need to address. But if you ask me, because each, each financial year, government shows us pro projects an increase in the revenue that is being generated and you want to think these we, we, they always give us a sign of hope but still in that particular financial year you find that we've again continued to borrow so this poses a question Do, aren't we aren't we just very hungry to borrow isn't the appetite just too high to borrow even without looking within the country to see how best we can tighten those loose ends through which we are losing revenue. Don't you think that that's where the problem is? Okay, I, it might be true. It is true what you are saying mm. um, that, but, but the whole issue is that there is a shortfall. There is a, a shortfall in taxes, like I have said, the economy. Of course, the economy, shortfall, but the don't economy. we just have to find how best we can tighten the loose ends? Because you, you already told me we have a lot of contributing factors mm. to why government does mm. not collect enough mm. revenue. Mm. And we cannot continue to say that we don't have, uh, w I mean, we have, yes, we need the tax incentives, but don't they get too much, the tax holidays? Mm. And don't we have some, some mm. companies, or some mm. businesses that are operating mm. without paying tax? So yeah. that is why I'm asking, don't you mm. think we should concentrate mm. on tightening those loose ends? Mm. Or is it just a high appetite to borrow? No, I, I agree. Uh, and I agree entirely that the, that the appetite is very high when we are borrowing. And because also I, I think we, we need to, maybe, maybe even our policy makers, you know, they, they haven't appreciated what it means. It's like a bonanza. And that's why even for you journalists, when you are reporting, you talk about what bank has given us. So and so has given us, like it's give, give, give. We so we are, we are there, you know, more, 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 you know, we are getting more. And then also we assume that, you know, because the repayment period is maybe 10 years, 20 years, hmm, that maybe it will be somebody else's, you know, <laughs> maybe somebody else's uh, problem to be able to, to pay. But I agree entirely there is a high appetite for borrowing. Because also when you look at the issues of debt, you look at the income, can we be able to get in our income from somewhere else? Like you are saying, we need to, 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 to block the leakages, yes. and there are many, you know, the illicit financial flows. When you look at our taxes, the way, for example, we have been discussing the issue of the double taxation mm -hmm. treaties, you know, we need to review those ones. The tax incentives we are giving to big companies, the working conditions, because, for example, if you give a, a tax incentive to a company, at least make sure that that company is G employing, giving decent employment to the Ugandans because that means that government can be able to get income from those people still pay as you earn. Mm -hmm. But most of our workers can't even pay, pay as you earn. Yeah, because they are casualization, they are, they are casual lab laborers, you know. So, so there are those issues which we need to look at, you know. For me, I really believe that Uganda we can be able to trade our way out of all these problems, you know. If we reorganize our, our economy, if we can be able to, 
to, to be prudent in the way we are using our money. B because you see, borrowing is not a problem. In fact, some, some countries, they ask your credit worthiness. Have you borrowed, you know? Have you repaid? How much have you ever borrowed? You know, and you say, oh, yeah, about one million dollars. And you paid it back, didn't you? Yes, I paid. That's when they give you money. So borrowing is not a problem. But where do you put that mm -hmm. money? And that is what I want to ask you. Isn't it another problem? Have we asked ourselves for what reasons we are borrowing? Don't you? Exactly. That's where the problem, another problem could be. What mm -hmm. are we borrowing for? Are we bo borrowing to... Uh, for, for infrastructure? Are we borrowing to create uh, a credit for the businessmen to be able to borrow this money and invest? Uh, isn't the reason for borrowing another, another cartel? Uh -huh. And I think that goes into the whole issue of debt management, you know, and debt acquisition. How do, you, how do we acquire all these monies, you know? Uh, and and I, I think for us as civil society, we should be are pushing government to be more transparent when they are borrowing money. Where is it going? Are we ready? Because you know, when you look at some of the monies we have borrowed, we haven't used it because it came in when we are not ready. In fact, there is a World Bank report which came out in 2016 for Africa as a whole, mm -hmm. that for every dollar we borrow, we use 0.8 percent, 0. Uh, 0 0.8 of a dollar. And for Uganda, our um, investment efficiency is 0 0.3 to 0 0.3, 0 0.33 to 0 0.36 percent. What does this mean? It means that 60 percent of all the money we borrow is wasted. That's World Bank report. And the Auditor General's report, was it of 2017 or 18, brought out to that issue that we don't use efficiently. The money that we borrow. We borrow, mm -hmm. you know, because of those issues of we are not ready, there is no escrow account, we and don't know, you know. Men. Exactly. Investment because yeah, uh -huh. we've seen projects where you, uh, let's say KIDIP or World Bank has financed probably a road or drainage system in Kampala and a report is read in that particular financial year and you find out that only even not 50% of the money was disbursed off yeah, to that exactly. project. Now where does all this where money go? Exactly. Mm. So, so, so I, I, I think in the way when we are moving forward these are the issues we need to look at as, not as civil society alone, but as citizens, because this is our money. This is taxpayers' money. So because I keep telling people that if you don't have medicine in the hospitals, ask why, why isn't there a hospital? Why isn't my school looking the way it's looking? It's because monies are going somewhere. Ask where is that money going? So as citizens, I think we need to ask questions about all this borrowed money. Because today, we are, people are now talking about debt. We are in a debt distress. We are talking about debt cancellation or debt restructuring. You know, mm. those are the words now mm. going on around debt. In fact, the moment you look at debt, debt restructuring. Because it feels like we already can't help ourselves. We can't. We can't. Now, uh, Madam Jen, let's talk matters, prudent debt management. Yeah, prudent debt management really uh, should also be put on the table for discussion uh, by Ugandans. Uh, how do we use our, our debt or the debt we acquire so that we get um, a return on that investment where we have put that money so that we can be able to get resources to pay back to pay back the loan and for me that would suffice as prudent debt management that we get it we put it where it really matters and where we can be able to get a return on investment
All right. Do we have some alternatives? Because when you look at even the reasons why we go to borrow, before we do that, do we present ourselves some alternatives? Or by the time government goes ahead to borrow, there is clearly absolutely no way we can uh, get this, the resources. Yeah, but, but maybe I, uh, I, I think before government should go to borrow, it, that the issue isn't where we can get, where can we get, where is the alternative to get the resources. The, the issue should be, should we, should we do that project? Is it value for money? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Then you go ahead and say, if it's really imperative, because you know, English has want and need. Yeah. Do you want it or do you need it? So we need to be clear as Ugandans. Do we need it? Do we need that project or not? If we say we do need it, then we say, where do we get the money from? You know, for me, that's also prudent uh, use of resources. You look at a, a, a project. In fact, when you look at the whole issue of the debt question, it's that government has taken on so many projects, very expensive projects, which were not budgeted for or even planned for. Because when you look at, for, let me give you an example, the whole issue of airline, hmm? the, the revival of the Uganda Airlines. It isn't in NDP2 or even in NDP1, the National Development Plan. It isn't there. You know, so if it wasn't there, did we, um, did we have um, an extensive analysis whether it's value for money or not? And that's just one example. So, so as we move forward, you know, things are really tight. Mm -hmm. We need to be to be prudent in how we use our resources. You know, it's like you, Madrid. Mm -hmm. you, I know. You get your little money, but the moment you get it, you hold on to it and think, should I buy a shoe? Should I? What, what is most I necessary? Do? Mm. What do I need? What's necessary? And I think even at the Uganda level, at the government level, we need to do, we need to do that. All right. But through your assessment, do we see the will to do that? Because one might think that uh, the reason why this appetite is really high, really high to borrow is that a few <laughs> beings do actually benefit from all this. Yeah, yeah, maybe the whole issue around political will. For me, I think some maybe we haven't really reached the wall when it comes to the debt issue. Maybe there are not so many people who are talking about it. But I think what we need to do is to raise this issue in in parliament in in any case it's good that we are we are having a new parliament anyway it's a new a new year a new a new government and maybe people will look at it differently that we need really to put this issue on the table and be able to be prudent in the way uh, we use our resources and it isn't just the debt resources the loans mm. but i think all the resources whether we are getting them from taxes whether we are you know we need to to do that but my worry what you are asking is that i'm really worried whether we know what we are going into mm. because for example just look at the public administrative burden yeah. hmm? We have been, like we talked when we are starting this mm. pro, uh, the program, we have been elect every day, members of parliament, local councillors, you know what. Now the members of parliament, even the last, uh, the, the, the last five years, okay. we have been saying, please let us reduce the public administrative yeah. burden. Yeah, we have added, added on the old people, the young, the what, you know, do we need them, you know, or do we just want them, you know? So, so we are, we are, it's, I don't know what we are going to do, you know. We're really not doing much, you think? No, we are not. We, are, we haven't really realized that we need to cut our clothes, our yeah. coat, according to the clothes we have, That's you know. Yeah. We don't because, and I understand, I don't know whether it will be true, that before the last parliament adjourned, they were talking about increasing their emoluments. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, where, where is it going to come from? 
not we taxpayers because we are it's like squeezing water from and that is what i was thinking that yeah. it, it's you and i that are going to suffer the burden but how do we suffer when we are dead <laughs> dead people don't suffer you know so 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 but but i think we need to put these issues in the public domain and we need to talk about them all right uh, even as we put it into the public domain i want someone who is watching us a trader down in chikubo to understand to what effect does a high public debt to how does a high public debt affect that particular trader even down to a local person you know the public the, the local person me and you mm -hmm. and everybody you know as ugandans you know it the public debt it means government is allocating resources which would have gone somewhere else to repaying the debt so it means when you go to hospital there won't be medicine because government is paying you know, money it borrowed, borrowed for a particular project. Exactly. The schools will be run down and you have to go to a private school because government schools have no resources. You know? So we need to look at it from that point of view. And uh, then government will look around where to get money. OTT, we are, we are looking at it now. You know? OTT will have to pay tax. So government will look around where to squeeze more taxes. And it's you and me, the people in Chikubo, to pay. You know? so, so, so when you hear burden, it's going to increase the tax burden. You know, it will be able to increase. But you are paying those taxes, but you are not getting the requisite um, services. Mm -hmm. you know? so, so for me, when I look at wh where the future, you know, I, I, it, it it's really, really gray. Mm. Mm. And uh, having having highlighted that factor that the high uh, public debt burden trickles down to the very last person mm. in the community, mm. who is supposed to hold government accountable? Um, it's you and me. Council. It's you and me who are supposed to hold government accountable through our members of parliament. And for me, I think this time I have seen... Um, so many young people interested in voting and for me i hope they will go ahead and also hold their leaders they have le elected accountable you know so let them talk about these issues of debt but they're not public them. information madam nalunga right. is it public information you and i can access this information because probably we make an, a few researches mm, mm, you have a mm, few documents mm, that have been mm, shared to you mm, from the ministry of finance itself but it, it's not really and we're not even sure if these are the correct figures so yeah, exactly. government is not really transparent when it comes mm, to this so yeah. how will the people get information in turn to question their leaders and uh, and that's um that that's where we should be to start from for members of parliament to put the minister of finance on to to, to take them to task to provide the information because a minister of finance is supposed to uh, to publish every quarter the issue of public debt you know how much have we borrowed what is happening but like you are saying even today we are not clear by the way the, the extent to which we have borrowed, mm -hmm. especially when it comes to, to domestic debt, it's not, we are not sure. So, so our members of parliament, for us who know, hmm, you and me and others who watch TV should publicize that information, but also tell the members of parliament to be able to hold government accountable. All right. Mm. So how do we move from the, 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 the situation that we are in? What is the way forward? Uh, the way forward, mm, we, need, we need a breathing space, a fiscal breathing space. This government, we can't breathe, by the way. We can't. You know? That was a we that was a propaganda <laughs> last no, year. It was, I it can't breathe. Yeah, I can't. It wasn't propaganda. You can't breathe. But it's something which we have taken on to talk about situations where mm -hmm. we, which are which are very dangerous. But even for us here, hmm, there is no fiscal breathing space because, like we have, you know, if you are paying debt, you are borrowing to pay to service your debt. You are paying more 
debt repayment, uh, debt servicing, more than your, your education, your health, your education, your water. You know, are you breathing? No, you are not. So we need either to cancel that debt but that will have a, it will be difficult. Well, how, why do you think it's difficult? Uh, b because um, remember, in 1996 uh, or in 2000, we had that date, that Jubilee date campaign. I was there. I was still young, very vibrant, and we mounted a campaign. You know that we are, we are not paying that debt. You know, there are some debts which we call odious. <laughs> Odious debt, and we said our governments are not paying that debt. Because we are saying, you as a lender, how do you lend to somebody like Amin hmm? to kill us? And then you expect us to pay back. We are not paying. So we are saying, we are not paying that debt. And it was a global, it was a global campaign. And there were some debt cancellations. But today, things have changed. We have, our governments have borrowed from private lenders, like Madrin here. There are people like you who are lending to government, by the way, mm. and they won't listen to debt cancellation, no. You know? Because they are businessmen at the end they of it business. all. They need their money too. Uh -huh. So we have borrowed from private lenders on the domestic market. They won't, they won't hear about, you know, cancellation. In fact, Uga uh, Uganda we have, we are part of the 73 low-income countries mm. yes. who have uh, who have benefited uh, from its called the debt, uh, the debt service suspension initiative. But most of the lenders refuse to be part of it. Just the G20, France, mm. UK, the other people who said, okay. So, so, and it was very little money, you know. So, so debt cancellation might be a problem, you know. And this is what we have to tell government, which is having this high appetite, that don't think about debt cancellation. It will be difficult. What we can think about is debt restructuring. Mm -hmm. mm? That instead of paying uh, servicing a debt today, you suspend the servicing maybe for 10 years while we are putting our house in order. So we can be able to. Uh, to, to, to campaign for that. But government also needs to work with others because all of us are indebted by the way. It's just a matter of degree. So we can look at, it can be a, an African initiative to negotiate with the lenders uh, that rescheduling, that maybe they give us 10 years we are, we are not servicing that debt. We plow that. Isn't the interest of, uh, accumulating? No, uh, those, those will be part of the negotiations. Okay. Yeah, the negotiations. Mm -hmm. So that in that period, we can be able to reschedule and then we hope that we can use that money prudently, put it in the real economy. Real economy means that you are generating income, you know. People, are, you are producing, you are exporting, people have decent jobs. Then after 10 years, you can be able to, to then restart the debt, uh, debt servicing. Madam Nalunga, there's been a discussion as well, uh, questioning mm. uh, borrowing for infrastructure. Uh, saying that if money is borrowed to construct, let me say, I'm just giving an example, Entebbe Express Highway. And probably, uh, it will take time for us to, to reap from that particular road in, in that particular context. But also saying it will take a shorter time if money is borrowed and given to small medium enterprises, to manufacturers, to boost the, the, their capacities in terms of production. Are saying that that will take a quicker time to generate this money back, get revenue and pay back. What do you have to say about that? Um, I, I, and I think that goes back to the whole issue w which we are talking about prudence. Hmm? Looking at where best can we, uh, can we generate resources. You know, there is a saying about, you know, um, a tide which can lift a number of boats mm -hmm. from the harbor. We need such. So we need to compare a road, that road to Entebbe Express, you know. Do we need it or did we want it? Should we have put that money looking at silos, at drying facilities, you know, making sure that we can be able to export? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm to Kenya because at the end of the day we are looking at an economy hmm, 
where we are, we where their incomes at household level and incomes at national level, but also incomes at farm level, you know, company. So we are looking at household, they are generating income. Companies are generating income and at national level, you know, at government level. So we need that thinking, you know. So w w w infrastructure is also, they are development infrastructure, mm -hmm. they are production infrastructure, you know, putting in, in infrastructure, you know, to grow the economy. For me, it's more prudent, you know, than um, that, that, that road, for example, the highway. Which will have returns at a later stage. At a later stage. And so uh, even the cost. So, so that's prudence. And that's why we are saying when it comes to data acquisition, we need a, a, big, a bigger debate. Let, it, let us debate such projects. Do we want them? Do we need them? Are there better projects where we can be able to put that money? All right. And maybe before we close off, how far have you as civil society gone in engaging government to open their eyes to, to such alternatives? Yeah, we, we, have had, um, we have had discussions with, um, with the Minister of Finance about these issues, but um, we have also had some discussions with members of parliament, uh, the committee on finance, uh, but now the challenge is now the change. For example, in parliament, they are new <laughs> members of parliament, mm -hmm. so we have to go back on the drawing board, you know, to be able to say, you know, you know, debt, prudent debt management, you know, the debt crisis, but it's something which we need to do. Uh, but I think also where what we need to do uh, more and better is what we are doing now. And that's why we are so grateful to Smart24 that we are putting these issues in the public domain so that more and more people can be able to talk about these issues. Your closing remarks, madam. Uh, okay. My closing remarks, one, is to say thank you uh, to Smart24 uh, and for the partnership. And also to say that beyond politics, mm, we need to look at the economy. We need to ensure that people live in dignity, you know, people have an income. And in order to do that, you know, in order to do that, we need to talk about these issues of debt, of trade, of the budget. All right, there you have it. Those are the words I'm taking away from this discussion. We need to talk about the debt, even as we head towards, uh, you know, uh, looking at how the budget is going to look for the next financial year. Because if these things are not put into consideration, it will be water under the bridge, if you ask me. I'm uh, moving away from the whole political season that we are, you know, experiencing. It's also important for you to know how we are performing. Because however much this is not public information, it is just a little bit of what we discussed that will help you make a decision from an informed point of view hold your leader accountable try to find out these monies that are borrowed how are they benefiting you as a youth who actually doesn't have a job today or you as a person who has a shop downtown in Kampala